According to Richard, Georgia ran off with the money raised by a GoFundMe, <laughs> resulting in his dog Sapphire being unable to receive life-saving <laughs> surgery for her tumor, tragically passing away. <laughs> I can't, I'm sorry, you can't help but laugh, dude. He did, he did so much. He did, it's like, at that point, it's like comically evil, man. Homeless, disabled veterans, cancer dog, okay? It's comically evil, it is cartoonish. Anyway, we're watching the Jobbery video. Used of identity in. theft. Wire fraud, false statements, falsification of records. Scamming a disabled veteran out of money he was raising for his sick dog. Now denying reports that he once performed as a drag queen in Brazil. I never claimed to be Jewish. I said I was Jew-ish. Claiming, for instance, he had a role in Hannah Montana. I'm just struck, not necessarily that a politician would lie, but that you would think no one would find out. Well, I ran in 2020 for the same exact seat, and I got away with it then. That photo, by the way, is the greatest snapshot of all time. Like, that is, it goes so hard. It will be remembered for generations. It's one of the hardest going photos out there. Nothing goes as hard, okay? Straight diva shit. So clean, so nice with it. Botox looking perfect. His, his beats looking snatched, whatever people say, okay? He beat it up. He's slaying, he's the slay queen, he's serving mama, slay mama. God, he's great. There's an old saying I find hard to disagree with. Politics is just show business for ugly people. No, get those lights off. Off! Nancy Pelosi's gazpacho police. They're too bright. Turn them off. Freedom! Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. Through a cynical lens, American politics can be seen as a deranged spectacle for the entire world to laugh at. The next time you get in trouble, call a crackhead. Say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Why, 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 why? I call upon all nations to stop these terrorist killers. Now watch this drive. Watch a never-ending source of... He just, Jabra just popped off with like some of my favorite moments of all time, including my least favorite moment of all time, where we found out that George W. Bush actually has really good fucking reflexes. Of entertainment that favors vapid theatrics over any actual substance. How many AR-15s do you think Jesus would have had? Well, he didn't have enough to keep his government from killing him. What do you say in response to the Pope? I'd say ISIS wants to get you. But I'd be lying if I said it wasn't funny. If our country's going to hell, we might as well enjoy the ride there. America is a nation that can be defined in a single word. I was gonna foot him, uh, foot, foot. But I don't think there's a single politician today who epitomizes our government's absurdity quite like George Anthony DeVolder Santos. Is it true that you have an OnlyFans page and you can peel a banana with your feet? <laughs> I just discovered what OnlyFans was about three weeks ago. I that was a lie. I was oblivious to the whole concept. <laughs> uh, uh, I just can't tell the truth. All right, so. You may have heard his name before or seen his picture on the news. And what? Wait, I didn't catch that part. I didn't know she said that. that. Be, I can't tell the truth. All right, so. The whole concept. <laughs> uh, uh, I just can't tell the truth. All right, so. Oh, my God. Isn't that the VJ, by the way? That literally, God, American politics is so fucking stupid. It's such a dumb fucking, oh, it's a clown show. So you may have heard his name before. Gagged, 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 gagged him. Four has seen his picture on the news and what well, that would be because George has become one of the most polarizing individuals in all of Congress, but that's not for any traditional reason. He was elected on a number of false Where's pretenses. Where's And I know your response to that may be, uh, doesn't every politician lie though? To which 149, we passed it. Uh, 212, sex toy. We passed both Which of those I would say TOSs. yes, but also you've never heard of George Santos. This guy's entire existence is made up. He's lived about a million different lives and as a result has put himself in the crosshairs of the FBI, the FEC, the GOP, the Brazilian government, the House Ethics Committee, and the nearly one million constituents who make up his district, just to name a few. I mean, he's facing 23 federal charges as we speak, and there's no guarantee he won't be charged with even more after this video comes out. 
out because when we look into his actual biography, we discover a man who was scammed, thieved, and manipulated his way to the top in a manner so unbelievable, he's had to escape entire countries. I mean, we're talking about an entirely different brand of criminal. He's like a Looney Tune, a Grinch-like figure, as some have suggested. George Santos just left Tim uh, Burchett's office with a baby in his arms. When asked if it was his baby, he said, not yet. But before we get to anything he did, it's important to establish somewhat of a base understanding of where the man comes from, which I'm gonna attempt to lay out as best I can, but keep in mind, this guy has lied about literally so many elements of his life that it's actually hard to get a straightforward timeline of events. So if anything here feels a bit disjointed, it's because George himself is a very disjointed and confusing person, okay? Not my fault. This is a guy who baselessly claimed his niece was kidnapped by Chinese communist, that he survived multiple assassination attempts, and that he's run a real estate empire on top of meeting Jeffrey Epstein. He's also lied about where he went to school, where he worked, where he got his money, that he was in- Every group's got that one guy, dude. Every group has to have, first of all, every gay person knows a guy like this, okay? But every group needs to have just a, a lying guy in general. Doubly fun if they're also a, a, a messy gay on top of that. Okay? It's just like, I mean, we I've talked about this before. Like, when I was in college, there was this dude in our group of friends who would do these, like, unimaginable things, these incredibly impressive things. And after a while, we realized, like, oh, he's just lying, right? He had this, like, one-up disease. You would say... Uh, you'd say something like, oh, I went on a jet skiing trip and it was awesome. And he'd have to follow you up with a story that he completely made up and be like, oh, yeah, well, I went on a, a on a snowmobile and did a flip. And, and after a while, we started having a little game where we'd just like start a story. We'd start a story specifically knowing full well that he's going to fucking, you know, raise the stakes there's different kinds of liars uh you're saying it's giving lebron lebron is like a like a white lie type of guy you know what i mean he's like um i would classify lebron as a as a guy who lies about things he doesn't need to at all but it doesn't even benefit him in in any way and often is doing it for the other person like for the sake of the other person like Oh, yeah, I love watching your movies, that type of thing. And, like, it's a situation that you could totally avoid if you were to say, well, I haven't watched that movie. I'm really sorry, right? But LeBron is the type of guy who goes, yeah, I love that movie. It's my favorite movie of all time to the guy who made the movie. You know what I mean? And there's no reason for him to do that. Oh, that's my favorite quote. I've actually never heard another quote that I like as much as my favorite quote that is the quote that you just mentioned. And it's like, why did you say that? There is no reason for you to have said that. The, the type of uh, dude that I'm talking about is like pathological and can't stop himself. He can't stop himself and there's a purpose for it. Hassan talks a lot without saying anything. Well, one, uh, I'm, a, uh, I'm a Twitch streamer, so yes, you're right about that. But two... I think what I'm talking about right now is, is you know, fairly, fairly personable if you have ever had friends or even if you've, like, watched anime. Every crew needs a Usopp. There you go. Usopp is a great example. These are the types of dudes, these are the types of dudes who just, like, lie about regular, banal, nonsensical bullshit things. But then... George Santos takes it one step further. He's the guy who, who lies for gain. But I think I would say, I would categorize him as like pathological in the maximum degree where he both lies for personal gain, as he has done time and time again, but he also lies when there's no reason to, okay? He just lies for the love of the game, just to tell a good lie, which is why he is the best. Okay, this is an incredible conversation. An actor on Disney Channel into one of my favorites that he produced a Spider Man musical on Broadway, which is especially bizarre to me because that specific musical he wrongly said he worked on was a commercial failure that lost millions of dollars and even. There, that's what I mean. Like, when you lie, not for personal gain, but for 
you lie in a way that like serves you L's. You know what I mean? That's when you know, that's when you know someone is absolutely, absolutely just lying for the fun of it, for the sake of being able to tell a lie. You know what I mean? Like, what's the worst thing you can think of? What's the worst movie? What's the worst song you can think of that is just like universally panned by critics? George Santos goes, I played a role in making that. For no reason. For no fucking reason. It's like, well, why did you say that? It just like kind of shows you to be a loser. Resulted in the injury of several cast members. Why you would want to tie your name to that, I just don't get. Half the time, there's nothing to be gained from these lies at all. In a 2022 congressional debate, he actually stole his opponent's answer to the question, what's your favorite holiday tradition? Oh, right this was awesome. In front of him. So Mr. Zimmerman, name one of your favorite family traditions. New Year's Eve. I hope my, hope my nephews and I, my brother and sister-in-law, I get together in our sweats, watch a stupid holiday movie, some sort of stupid comical holiday movie and eat the food that we shouldn't eat all year round. haagen is always a staple. <laughs> Mr. Santos, your favorite family tradition? Um, our favorite family tradition is just family time. It doesn't matter if it's a Tuesday night or if it's a Sunday night or if it's Christmas. It's sweatpants, pints of haagen all over the place. He literally copied bro's own family tradition right down to the br- Yeah, he just, he to his face. To his face. I love that. Like that's that that's so disrespectful. That's so ridiculous to his fucking face. He's just sitting right Random there. I love that. Cream. This man's a fucking menace. But where does it all begin, right? Well, even that's the subject of debate. As the story goes, George Santos was brought into the world on July 22nd, 1988 in Sunnyside, Queens, and was raised in a basement apartment in Jackson Heights. And if we're going off this Wikipedia biography for a user named Anthony DeValder, last ah! edited by him in 2011, we would learn his drag career began at 17, winning several gay beauty pageants between making the rounds at Brazilian nightclubs before going into acting on various Disney Channel shows and landing a role in the 2009 film The Invasions. For the record, Wikipedia editor, um, some of them are the strongest soldiers and many of them are fucking insane. Okay, that's a red flag. If you're a Wikipedia head mod, that's a red flag. Starring Uma Thurman, a movie that doesn't exist. All because he was inspired by the Steven Spielberg film Independence Day, which Spielberg didn't make. So this biography doesn't actually clear anything up, unfortunately. In that case, what do Skip. other people tell us about George? Well, as his former co-worker, Barbara Hurtis, told Patch.com, he used to tell us he was born in Brazil and that he would travel back and forth and that he came from money, which we know for a fact that George has lied about coming from money. Once telling a judge he worked for Goldman Sachs in 2017. The reason he was in court, by the way, was so he could testify on behalf of a family friend who ended up pleading guilty to ATM skimming and later told the feds that it was George who taught him how to do it. But that's a different story entirely. The transcript here is hilarious to me because when the judge asks, you worked for Goldman Sachs in New York? George's response was just, yup. Which in hindsight was a bold-faced lie. One of many that he'd actually cop to once- Like a lot of this stuff is just uh, resume padding, right? And it probably gets lost in the sea of other lies. Like my favorite types of lies are not, my favorite types of lies are not George Santos saying he worked at Goldman Sachs, which is so verifiably untrue and so easy to verify, especially if you're running for fucking Congress in New York. Are you kidding me? You fucking accidentally wave your hand around. You're gonna slap a couple fucking Goldman Sachs workers, okay? In that, in that circuit that he's a part of. It's wild. However, that's not his best type of lies. His best type of lies aren't... E They're the ones where he, he says things like he was a varsity athlete for the volleyball team and had a horrific injury that stopped him, but he can still play really well and he will actually play on the intramural, uh, the, the intramural Congress volleyball team. Shit like that blows my fucking mind it's like it's so specific that's such a specific lie and you have to follow through on that it's like the top of the hour ad break it's coming for you you know what i mean and when i say it it has to be the truth because i'm gonna serve it and you're gonna see it unless you subscribe I'm not going to lie to you about that. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. Here's a three-minute ad break now. He realized there was nowhere else to run. 
before beginning his political career Roth. or any career Los for that matter, we know George the was living near Rio de Janeiro with his mother in 2008. Or he may have been living in the U.S. and visiting his mom in Brazil, as some of his friends have now stated, but that's a detail. The point is, he was around 20 at the time he stole the checkbook of a man his mother had been caring for and used it to rack up around $1,300 in fraudulent checks, according to mm. Brazilian court documents. To make matters worse, this elderly patient his mom had been working as a caregiver for was deceased at the time George took his checkbook and forged his signature in order to buy luxury clothes for his boyfriend. And Excuse me, he wasn't using it. Hello, what is he gonna do? Take it like a pharaoh? Take it to uh, take it to his grave with him? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. He stole from a dead person. Yeah, it's the best type of person to steal from. Despite him insisting he's committed no crimes in America or abroad, Brazilian police records indicate a different story. That George actually confessed to the crime over a decade ago, not just pleading with the store owner through a Brazilian social media platform, but eventually appearing in front of authorities in 2010 and admitting to the fraud alongside his mother. While also telling him he was a white professor, according to police documents. And I think one of the wildest discoveries I made while researching this video is the fact that his lawyer for this was reportedly convicted for his connection to a gang-related murder and was defending George while on house arrest. That is just something you can't even make up. As far as the store owner goes, he recalls having to pay for the stolen items out of his own pocket at the time, recently telling Mother Jones how visibly deceitful George came across. Now, George didn't acknowledge the fraudulent checks again until this year when he agreed to a $5,000 settlement and a confession in exchange for avoiding prosecution. The reason he just now settled this thing is because when Brazilian police tried to subpoena him originally in 2011, George was mysteriously nowhere to be found. He wasn't with his mom, and it turns out he wasn't even in the country. Because I guess, for whatever reason, George decided to leave Brazil behind right then and make a new name for himself up north in the land of opportunity. I mean, he did... He did go to the one place where you can kind of pop off. Like, this is... America is a collection of con men. It is a, it is a country built around being able to con other con men. This is the greatest place to be if you are a con man. We literally had Donald Trump as president. And the perfect place as a con man to actually thrive, the perfect field, the perfect sector to thrive as a con man is politics. So we kind of... Did all the right things. Much like Connor Roy, I don't doubt George Santos was interested in politics from a very young age, but he didn't become very vocal about them until 2019, giving his takes on the hot button issues of the day on Facebook, along with schmoozing Republicans at various events and fundraisers. Today was a blessing for me as a patriot to come down here to Mar-a-Lago. During these early days before he was really established, George made appearances at Mar-a-Lago, donated tens of thousands to the New York Young Republican Club, and attended CPAC where he likely caught COVID at the very start of the pandemic in March 2020. This, to my knowledge, is the first time anyone in the media had even uttered the name George. He made the Hodge. Yeah, it's one of the pillars of being a conservative. You have to go. You have to do the Hodge. You have to make dua underneath the disgusting golden arches, okay, of Mar-a-Lago. You have to. Santos on live television. He even Derek. got COVID. Like, that's it. That's perfect. Getting COVID at CPAC is, is a blessing. This guest tested positive for COVID-19 and joins us via Skype in quarantine. Welcome New York congressional candidate George Santos. George, great to see you. How are you feeling right now? I, I'm in recovery. And it was also shortly after he launched his first congressional campaign running for the U.S. House of Representatives in New York's third congressional district. George was going up against the incumbent Democrat Thomas Suozzi, who ended up taking the win by a surprisingly narrow margin, actually. Two weeks after Election Day, Democrat Tom Suozzi Swazi has won re-election representing New York's 3rd Congressional District. Swazi had 53%, Republican challenger George Santos 47%. Traditionally speaking, the Nassau County Republican Committee would otherwise be pretty strict about letting a newcomer into the fold with such minimal political experience. But the pandemic dissuading anyone else from running, coupled with the fact that the county had moved more towards the left in recent years, meant George was kind of the sole Republican candidate and became the nominee by default. And while his campaign would have 
inevitably prove unsuccessful, it would give him the chance to mingle with constituents and work the media circuit, essentially priming his voter base for a grand return in 2022. Hey everybody, George Santos here running for New York's 3rd Congressional District. I will fight socialism until my last dying breath because I despise it. Socialism has been tried in every country and failed miserably. And I count on you to send me- I love how fucking stupid Americans are, dude. You could just say these things and then they will literally be like, hell yeah, brother. No questions asked. That's- God damn it, dude. Oh, fucking Christ. It's just so mind-boggling to me that people still go, Hassan, you're a leftist grifter after all this shit. It is so easy. It's so easy to grift. It's just literally in the opposite direction of the way that people think. Ah! You think to represent you? We need as many volunteers as we can get for this process. I think it's about time we put Thomas Wazi into the retirement section. In many ways, this race was a way for him to make an impression, which he certainly did, networking with the Trump family. Like, not to use a Family Guy reference, but that 9-11 bit is so prescient, dude. This is it, dude. This is it. Just substitute that for, like... What are your plans for cleaning up our environment? 9-11. <laughs> what about our traffic problem? 9-11. Hmm? <laughs> ...and buying entire tables at Young Republican events. What's pretty funny, though, is that despite all his efforts, George <laughs> didn't even live in the district he was trying to represent. And when reporters pointed this out, George claimed an address that in actuality belonged to his campaign treasurer. That same treasurer who would later admit to fraud to implicate George in a scheme to embellish his finances, but trust me, we'll get to that too. It was also during this first congressional run that fellow candidates in other districts began to wonder how legitimate his fundraising claims really were. There seemed to be a pretty wide gap between what he said he had raised and what he had actually reported on campaign finance disclosure forms. As congressional candidate Josh Eisen told Intelligencer, I would look into his filings and see that he had raised almost no money. Everybody in politics exaggerates a little bit, but he was saying he had a six-figure quarter and it would turn out that it was a four-figure quarter. One consultant plainly labeling him a walking campaign finance violation and that it's been reported George came up with ideas to try and avoid campaign finance law with one scheme that would allegedly involve getting donors who had maxed out their donations to him to give to the political action committees of other candidates who would then funnel the donation back to Santos as intelligencer states. But these things weren't explored in depth at that time because he- My favorite thing is just doing campaign finance violations in a country that has made it legal. It is so- unimaginably hard it's like getting arrested as a foreign agent just fucking if you're gonna lobby the government as a foreign agent like they let you do it unless you're apac in which case of course you don't need to register as a foreign agent because it's the american israeli political act uh, action committee so it's different obviously don't say that they're foreign agents do not say that apac represents the interests of israel a foreign nation do not say that that is anti-semitic don't ever say that oh wait did Benjamin Netanyahu recently just meet with the heads of APAC? Uh, that's neither here nor there. Anyway, um, but but again, I digress. It's just like like half of the stuff that these goddamn criminals get arrested for is basically not filing the right paperwork, okay? It's just so fucking funny. It's like, how? How do you get arrested? Or how do you get prosecuted or investigated for this kind of thing when... The law has made it legal. He was still so low profile enough that nobody really cared to look into him, honestly. His opponent figured, why waste money and resources on a background check that could end up giving George more exposure when he could otherwise just kind of cruise through an easy win without all the hassle. So in fear of Streisand affecting the young Republican, Swazi opted not to prioritize opposition research, keeping George's lies under wraps for at least a couple more years. Democratic Congressman Tom Swazi sees a victory on the horizon, banking on 90,000 absentee ballots. A newcomer to the political scene is singing a very different tune. The 32-year-old Queens native who works in finance credits his current lead in a vote to an underestimated campaign which connected with voters. Directly following his marginal loss in New York's 3rd District, George Santos was furious, believing he had actually- <laughs> I said George Santos. <laughs> 
Because he was, get it? He won the race. He began to allocate money and staff to a recount that never happened, along with accusing the county's GOP chairman of sabotaging his campaign because he's gay. According to intelligencers, some of his own staff members were starting to worry about his mental health when he reportedly suggested finding a way to somehow throw out Democratic ballots as they came in. A hysteria that culminated when he went... Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, it's okay when Trump does it but it's not okay when George Santos does it at an incredibly low level. Excuse me. This is why I'm saying he, Donald Trump needs to literally make George Santos his vice president. Okay, perfect fit. Perfect, perfect VP. Perfect VP, okay? Trump Santos has a nice ring to it. Just saying. Went to Washington, D.C. to attend an orientation for new congressional members, even after it was abundantly clear he had lost. Refused to leave the room even as Swazi was announced the winner. And if that wasn't enough, he'd then what? make a speech at the start. What are you doing? He attended the orientation? The steel rally one day ahead of the January 6th riots, arguing his election had been stolen from him, just like Donald Trump. I remember this part. This was awesome. They to Donald J. Trump. They stole. My election. Watching that rally from home was one of George's former roommates who couldn't help but notice the Burberry scarf he was wearing it looked a little familiar. While they were roommates, Greg Morey said Santos stole his Burberry scarf and later wore it during the rally ahead of January 6th. That's awesome. I saw that video and I just like, yeah, not very happy. Those campaign finance problems I mentioned earlier, though, would absolutely bleed into his second congressional run in 2022, the successful one, which means people actually looked into this stuff. For instance, we know he was spending lavishly on the second campaign trail, racking up around $40,000 in flight expenses, buying his staffers expensive clothes while still trading them like sh Also, once again, uh, you know, we got a, we got a situation we got a situation on our hands that is also identical. Who amongst us does not have that gay friend who just steals their expensive clothing? You know what I mean? I'm just saying. The parallels are there. Austin doesn't lie, though. That's the difference. And Austin is nowhere near as... I mean, he's messy and he loves drama, but it's nowhere near shit apparently he also had a tendency to spend 199 dollars at restaurants and hotels which is just under the legal threshold of 200 dollars for expenses that campaigns are legally required to track to give you an idea of how rare an expense like that would be fec data shows 90 percent of all house and senate races across the country did not report a single transaction between 199 and 199 dollars and 99 cents in 2022 while the santos campaign on the other hand reported 40 of them. In fact, Politico states that George's at campaign accounted for roughly half of all expenses by all campaigns that cost exactly $199.99, a statistical improbability. Not to mention the countless donations from people who either don't exist or don't recall sending George any money. His cousin, for example, was dumbfounded by a pledge for $5,800 that he says he never made, adding to the overall mystique of how George managed to scrounged together a $700,000 sum he loaned his own campaign in 2022. But we'll explore all that and more in just a second. What's important right now is that he won, partly thanks to his district being redrawn six months before the election to include a much more Republican area. He was already running unopposed, which made him the Republican nominee, making it easy for him to beat the Democratic nominee. Rob this is why I suspect people were coming in here and being like, well, wasn't he running unopposed? Doesn't matter, brother. You, you don't give money you don't get any fucking RNC donos without like a little bit of background checks. I mean, normally, which is why I'm shocked. Like he got, he had to have been, he had to have been the luckiest motherfucker out there. I don't understand how he just got away with so much. Robert Zimmerman in a newly red region. This redrawing of the county lines was truly the best thing he could have asked for. It was a gift, but unfortunately, everything to come after this would be the exact opposite of a gift. We picked him up pretty early as a fraud and a bragger and a liar 
um, which you know you, you you come across sometimes in politics, but he was off the scale. But first, a brief word from our sponsor, Fume. Fume is a flavored air device that uses plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habit for a positive one. Fume uses cores infused with plants such as- Ethical reacts, ethical reacts, ethical reacts. We're doing ethical reacts. Uses no nicotine and no vapor. Just ethical reacts. Plant flavored air. Shouts out the Jobry. Bad habit and enjoyable experience. We are watching Jobry, friend of the show, Jobry's well the fraud who fooled Fooled America, the lies of George Santos video. Very good video overall. Well sourced. Having served over 150,000 customers with thousands of success stories, there's no reason that can't be you. Head to tryfume.com slash jobbery or scan the QR code and use code jobbery to get 20% off your order today. But I've got to warn you, that 20% off deal only lasts through December 1st, so you better hurry. Otherwise, it's 10% off, which is still pretty good in my opinion. Oh no, it's December 1st. Try FUM.com and use code Jobbery when you check out. Huge thanks again to the wonderful people over at Fume for sponsoring this one. So now, Nassau County Legislator Josh Lapizan. It's a fake vape for all of you fucking vape heads out there who want to quit vaping, I think. Has launched a new campaign with county residents to keep track. To be fair, kind of a wild thing to call yourself. Like, call your brand Fumes. Like, when I think of fume, I don't think of good things. I think of, like, nasty air. ...of Congressman Santos. Kind of keep an eye on him and his whereabouts. He's calling it Where's George? By the time George made his accept... That means we have to watch the ads. Who says that? It's, uh, it's the Hasanabi style guide. Uh, if, uh, if a video is, has come out recently... If a video has come out recently, then that means that like their their uh, CTR campaign is still happening, like their direct response campaign is still happening. So it's uh it's it's valid to watch their ad. If it's like an old ass video, of course, like we'll skip it because that it doesn't matter. They're not getting any, uh, they're not getting any dollars off of that, or they're not getting any um, like they've already the campaign is over most likely. Speech on the night of November 8th, 2022, exactly one year apart from me typing this now, the man was already beginning to raise eyebrows. Turns out his own campaign had actually been made aware of his shady past in 2021 when they conducted what's known as a vulnerability study. Basically, a routine background check to see if there's anything in a candidate's past that an opponent could potentially latch onto as an attack. Well, George's history was so bad that some of his own staff reportedly urged him to step down. The complicated web of deceit this man was spinning for himself was so blatant and shameless that his own paid employees were telling him he'd be better off and just fading into obscurity. You know how crazy that is? But of course, he didn't listen. And by December 2022, just one month after he secured his seat in the house, these lies would finally catch up to him in the form of a New York Times article laying everything out for the public to witness. This investigation revealed how city group in Goldman. Far too late, by the way. Far too late. Too little too late crazy that it took that long. Sachs had no record of a man named George Santos or Anthony DeVolder ever working there after he had already bragged to voters about his plentiful experience on Wall Street. Going on to prove he never attended Baruch College where he at one point claimed to have slayed on the volleyball team. I actually went to school on a, on a volleyball scholarship. I, you did? I, knew, uh, I did, yeah. Um, when I was in Baruch, we were the number one volleyball Did you graduate team, from Baruch? Uh, did you graduate from there? Yeah. So did I. I. Did, I did. So did I. Oh, very cool. So, great school. Great institution. Very yes. liberal, but very good very good professors who don't show their bias, which is which is very uh, interesting, but that's a whole other conversation. But it's funny that we went to, we went to, to play against Harvard, Yale, and we... Them. This one's pretty funny to me because he spoke at length about playing on this team, all while knowing damn well he never even attended the school. And it's funny, I was the smallest guy and I'm 6'2". Look, I sacrificed both my knees and got very nice knee replacements, uh, knee replacements from oh, wow. HSS playing volleyball. That's how serious I took the game. In fact, he never even received a degree from higher education, despite claiming on the National Republican Committee's website that he once attended NYU, meaning he never attained an MBA and never scored a 710 on the GMAT, as he's also specifically liked to claim. Then there was the pet charity he liked to cite on the campaign oh, trail. Founding oh, Friends of Pets United in 20- It's so awesome. This is like, 
this is like a like a old 17th century uh folk story comical levels of evil okay like it's the one thing white people can't fucking stand like is is abuse towards animals like orphaned pets okay it's so good yeah, I mean, literally, Corella de Santos, Corella de Vil. Thirteen. Shit. George spent the next five years saving two thousand five hundred dogs and cats out of the goodness of his own heart, as his website claimed. Only as subsequent reports have found this thing wasn't even registered as a charity in the states of New York or New Jersey. One of the only remnants of this thing the Times could verify was a Facebook post promoting a fundraising event in twenty seventeen. But the beneficiary of that event claims to have never received the fund. And that Georgia kept making up excuses for why he didn't have the money. I mean, he was definitely facilitating the adoptions of these dogs, but where he was getting them from is a whole other story. Past associates of his claim he would brag about rescuing dogs off the streets himself, while this Amish dog breeder in Pennsylvania paints an entirely different picture. According to him, George showed up to his ranch looking to purchase some puppies, writing nine checks totaling out to be about $15,000 that the farmer grew as suspicious of. But by that point, George already had the dogs in his car, so he took the gamble, and shockingly, the checks bounced. Have you gotten the money back? No. Have you heard from anybody about it? No. Do you believe this is the man who bought your dogs and put them in the car and took them away from you? I feel it is. Based on my memory, I would say yes, it is. Three days after this, George attended a pet adoption event in Staten Island, according to a former owner of that business. George had literally, allegedly, stolen puppies and would actually be charged for check fraud in the state of Pennsylvania in 2017. The only way he got out of that was by telling prosecutors he worked for the SEC and had his checkbook stolen. Somehow, this worked, and even his lawyer friend, who believed him at the time, has since told CNN she no longer thinks George was the victim of any fraud. And if you're wondering what happened with that adoption event, George reportedly took the check written to his charity, crossed out the name of the charity, and replaced it with his own, cashing it out under Anthony DeVolder. Then there's, of course, the story of disabled Iraq war veteran Richard Ostoff, who alleges George- Come on. Come on, dude. Come on. Like, stealing the puppy of a, and, and refusing the help, the puppy of a disabled homeless veteran. Come on. George scammed him out of $3,000 that was meant to go to his sick service dog. According to Richard, Georgia ran off with the money raised by a GoFundMe, <laughs> resulting in his dog Sapphire being unable to receive a life-saving <laughs> surgery for her tumor, tragically it passing away. You were homeless at the time. I was homeless at the time. I had broken an ankle really bad, couldn't work for a year and a half, so I couldn't pay my rent and I was evicted. I was living in a tent on the side of Route 9 in uh, Howell, New Jersey with my dog. Um, and she had already had that growth growing. I can't. I'm sorry. You can't help but laugh, dude. He did. He did so much. He did. It's like. At that point, it's like comically evil, man. It's comically evil. It is cartoonish. There's no reason to do these things. It was getting bigger and bigger by the minute, it seemed. I finally decided to take her to the vet to see what they could do to have it, take, have it removed. And they gave Oh. Homeless disabled veterans cancer dog, okay? Homeless disabled veterans cancer dog. What are we doing? $3,000 quote. Richard says he was first introduced to George's charity by a vet tech and that George seemed confident he could get the funds needed to save Sapphire's life. He said he was very... Um Right, respected with his charity, it would help me very much to get to get the uh, uh, money in a sooner amount of time than later. Through George or Anthony DeVolder's charity, Richard's friends and family all pitched in to help, along with his old Navy buddies and even strangers who he had never heard of. Watching this thing gain traction over the course of a couple of months it must have been really encouraging for Richard to see. And for a moment, it really seemed like Sapphire, a dog who had saved his life on multiple occasions, would finally receive the treatment she needed. But God according damn. to him, George complicated things. Only allowing Richard to go through his preferred veterinary clinic in New York rather than Richard's local one, which wasn't the easiest for Richard considering he was homeless and couldn't drive at the time. But George assured him he'd at least make up for it by paying the tolls and gas money, which he never did. Richard never got any of the money, in fact, and about four months later is when Sapphire passed. Of course, if you listen to George, though, it's all a big distraction and that he never-
The reports that I would let a dog die is shocking and insane. My work in animal advocacy was the labor of love and hard work. Over the past 24 hours, I've received pictures of dogs I helped rescue throughout the years along with supportive messages. These distractions won't stop me. God, he, the goat. The goat. Truly the goat. Never allowed a dog to die. Providing it zero pictures, by the way, of all the pets he supposedly saved, but whatever. How Damn. are we supposed to believe him here when he's also presented no evidence he did any charity? It's not even a real 501c3. Like, he was just... God, he's so... He was, oh my God, he was, he's such a fucking con man. It's so perfect. He is the perfect person to be in American politics. And here we are, here we are fucking dropping the ball big time, dude. Letting this one slip. Like, how do we, how are we not allowing this man to continue? Charity work for kids with skin conditions like he's previously claimed. According to his old campaign website, he and his family engaged in helping children with EB. But as executive director of Deborah of America, a global consortium of organizations working on behalf of people with EB, who knows, quote, all the global EB charities notes, there is nothing in their database or general records to indicate George and his family's volunteerism at all. Even SOSEB Kids, who advocates for children with EB in Brazil, has found no records of George's family ever donating to their organization, which is probably why this line about helping kids with EB was removed from his website entirely and replaced with a more generic and difficult to verify line. Why? About why? Why? Like, why are you picking these things, okay? Why are you doing these things? I just don't get it. He he's never said a truthful thing him supporting at-risk children and American veterans, but still never actually showing any proof. The Times also brought up George's alleged $750,000 salary and over $1 million in dividends from his company, the Devolder Organization, which not only has no- By the way, this is what I said was like gonna pop him, which it did. For the record. No public LinkedIn page, but its address appears to be at a Florida mailbox store located in a strip mall next to a Dollar General and a Chinese takeout place. Yet George would describe this thing a few different ways. Once referring to it as a family firm that managed $80 million in assets before later calling it a capital introduction consulting company. The disclosures revealed it had no clients, which could be illegal if any clients did exist, but would also be pretty bad if they didn't because what actually was this thing? And more importantly, where did all his alleged fortune come from? Well, right now, nobody knows since he's never given a straight answer, but he'll tell you where it's not from. Uh, one of the principal critiques I've heard is that a lot of money uh, was donated to your campaign by you, 700,000, I believe. Where did it come from? Well, I'll tell you where it didn't come from. It didn't come from China, Ukraine, or Burisma. How about that? <laughs> yeah, two, two normal guys just having a chat. Nothing to see here. Just two normal guys having a chat in front of a Jesus poster. You know, with live, laugh, love all over. Moms for Liberty fucking mug in the background too. Also another very normal. Please don't, please don't look up the high level pedophiles that work for Moms of Liberty. Um, very normal stuff happening here. Okay. Just a normal ass podcast with two chill ass dudes in Congress that certainly are not both under... Uh, ethics committee investigations and uh and and subsequent federal uh investigations as a matter of fact just two guys having a laugh having a chat god the republican party is awesome i mean the democratic party too fucking bob menendez oh i love american politics so much because you know when i'm covering ethnic cleansing happening in gaza day in day out for you know what Five, six, seven, um, two months now at this point. Two months. Endlessly. You could take a breather and take a step away from that to go back to covering normal American politics. And it's just a fucking whole ass clown show. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that uh -huh. is an answer. Great, man, but that's not the question Matty Boy asked now, is it? And while George liked to talk up a big game about his family fortune being in real estate, the Times found no evidence of the Santos family owning any properties at all, despite him claiming up to 13 residential properties at one point. Instead, they uncovered a string of evictions George faced, beginning in 2015 when he owed over $2,000 in unpaid rent, then again in 2017 when another landlord accused him of owing $10,000 being fined at $12,000 some of his crimes are based like this though like just not just like refusing to pay his rent I respect that 
Like stealing from other Republicans, love that. Stealing from Republican voters, love that. You know, and what do you do with the theft that you engaged in? Purchase OnlyFans, support sex workers, support Sephora. Maybe that part is whatever. But like supporting sex workers, love that. He is a, he is a bit of a Robin Hood in, in uh, many respects. He's in a civil judgment. Though as the Times points out, Georgia did become pretty vocal about housing issues in later years. Just not from a tenant perspective. Asking in 2020. He was a landlord's activist. Will we landlords ever be able to take back possession of our property? My family and I nearing a one-year anniversary of not receiving rent on 13 properties. The state is collecting their tax, yet we get zero help from the government. We worked hard to acquire these assets. One, will we landlords ever be able to take back possession of our property? She really said, I'm joining the war on landlords on the side of the landlords. But of course, this is something he'd later fest to as well. Telling the Post, George Santos does not own any properties, even though he once claimed an apartment in Rio de Janeiro on a financial Bro, he's LARPing as a landlord. He is so perfect. He's the perfect neoliberal in many in many ways, you know, the the quintessential neoliberal Democratic Party voter hates the Republican Party despite agreeing with them on everything as it pertains to the economy, LARPing as a landlord while not owning any fucking. He is a R slash neoliberal poster. He's gay. OK, he's gay as hell. And on top of that, he is posing as a fucking landlord when he has no properties and is actually behind on rent by $10,000. Oh my God. Disclosure forum. Also, why is he talking in third person here? But I just think it's hilarious. He'll literally LARP online as a landlord if it means getting a few retweets. Hilarious stuff, honestly. No notes. But I mean, over the years, George has claimed a lot of jobs that he couldn't. He's also a Ukraine Globe Twitter guy too. Oh my God, he literally is. He is an r slash neoliberalism poster, dude. Oh my God. You're right. He LARPed as a Ukrainian too. Prove he actually has. Second yes. thought video drop. Goldman Sachs we'll watch it later. Them, but he also tried saying he lost four employees at the 2016 Pulse nightclub shooting in Florida. That, that was insane. At the time, have people that worked for me in the club. We, my company at the time, we lost four employees that were, that were at Pulse nightclub. Only the Times was able to review the obituaries of those lost that night and found no connections of them to any purported businesses George claimed to even be involved with, which is like an extremely easy thing to prove. All of this stuff is. I mean, he was making $15 an hour at a dish call center at the same time he was telling people he was working as a rich financier on Wall Street. It's just that nobody looks into it until it's too late and he's already in office. He was, however, involved with a company called Linkbridge in 2019 before shifting to an investment company called Harbor City Capital Both based scams. in Florida, which already should raise some... Yeah, no, it scams, both of them. Red flags, what the f Harbor City? This thing was a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> it literally used YouTube videos to bait investors with false promises of double digit returns before being shuttered by the SEC. To this day, George claims he had absolutely no idea of any illegal activity happening while there. And I have no reason to doubt that. This is a guy with a clear conscience and a reputation for being honest. What, what, what more can I say? This is yeah. his very first True. TV interview since you should say it. Surface. I'm not a fraud. I'm not a fake. I, I, I didn't materialize from thin air. I worked damn hard to get where I got my entire life. Needless to say, this article revealed a lot, but George retaliated hard, providing copious amounts of documents and files on top of files to prove the undisputed legitimacy of every single one of his original claim. One problem i have with jobbery one problem i have with jobbery is that like his beats go extra hard on the background and i just constantly i just constantly fucking find myself bobbing my head you know what i mean and like half the time it's not funny stuff like this it's like gruesome crimes and i'm just like bobbing my head while he's talking about like how I don't know, like a YouTube mom has been doing child abuse or something. <laughs> Kidding. Well, his lawyer slammed the article as a smear campaign riddled with defamatory allegations. Georgia never did come up with any evidence to defend himself with. In fact, to make matters worse, almost immediately after this thing was published, Jewish Insider would reveal some pretty damning information regarding his <laughs> family tree. I think one of the questions that, that really probably hits home to a lot of people is, is, 
Are you Jewish? See, George was going to <laughs> flaunt his supposed Jewish heritage in front of voters, painting it as a story of survival, tenacity, and grit, as he put it at a Jewish coalition conference, for example. <laughs> Oh, good morning. Shabbat shalom to everybody. He talked about it all the time to voters. You know, my grandparents survived the Holocaust. All Jewish lasers in space. <laughs> I'm a Jew, trust me. He was literally at a menorah lighting the very night before the New York Times article dropped. He made no secret that his maternal grandparents fled Jewish persecution in Soviet-led Ukraine before escaping the Nazis in Belgium and finally settling in Brazil. Until it came out that his grandmother was actually born in 1927 and would have been 13 by the time he claimed she left Belgium in 1940 while married to her husband. It would also seem George's grandfather was, by all indications, Brazilian, according to a historian from the University of Rio de Janeiro who specializes in the entry of foreigners in Brazil from 1939 to 1945. Exactly the time frame we're looking at here. Which conflicts with the initial story that his grandfather escaped Stalin's Ukraine in the 20s. In fact, according to the historian, only two of foreigners entered Brazil from Belgium by the name of Devalder, but they arrived separately after the war in 1948 and 1955 and left pretty soon after. Though he did acknowledge George's great-grandfather who arrived in Brazil at the end of the 19th century according to an extensive genealogical record of the Santos family. Finally concluding, George has an interesting family history with nice and important people. I suspect he doesn't have the slightest idea of this. For that reason, he invented ancestors. Now again, multiple family records show your maternal grandparents were born in Brazil and a genealogist told CNN there's no sign of Jewish and or Ukrainian heritage and no indication of name changes along the way. It's my favorite thing because like it's awesome that he wanted to hit the full Monty like he was like I'm Jewish I'm Latinx and I'm Ukrainian like if there was another fucking war happening, he would have added that onto the pile 100%. Okay? He he wanted to hit he wanted to hit all the categories. It's so perfect. Like if China had fucking put, I don't know, Taiwan under a blockade, he'd be like, "I'm actually Taiwanese." Many people don't know this, but I am from Taiwan. If he was running now, he 100% would have called himself Israeli. Oh, absolutely. Like, if he was running for the first time right now, he'd be like, I am literally from Israel. I, my family is from Tel Aviv, and I lost so many of my friends and family members. They are from Kibbutz Be'eri or some shit. At that point, George had been cornered. He went from basically being gifted a seat in the House of Representatives on a silver platter to becoming enemy number one of the media before he was even sworn into office. Within the ranks of the United States Congress, there's felons galore, there's people with all sorts of shysty backgrounds, and all of a sudden, George Santos is the very Magdalene. He's not wrong about this, though. He is right about this. The only difference is, like, he, like, he's not wrong. A lot of these fuckers are, are assholes, they're crooks, they're criminals, right? It's just that, like, I guess they are nowhere near as, like, wild as as, as George Santos was like his crime, his real crime is that he went too far because he just had love for the game. Of United States. Yeah. As, as, uh, as Spencer Ackerman put it, not unique, but he is exemplary. Exactly. Much like Henry Kissinger, not unique, but certainly exemplary. Breaking his silence the day after Christmas with an appearance on WABC and an interview with the New York Post telling the Post I am not a criminal and that my sins here are embellishing my resume. I am sorry. Chucking his lies about Wall Street up to a poor choice of words and admitting he never graduated from any college adding we do stupid things in life. Before Elon went too far and nobody goes after him. It's because Elon at least is is doing what first of all Elon lies all the time but he lies in a way that actually benefits his shareholders. Like, if he actually lied to his shareholders directly in violation of, of uh, the law, okay, and then it hurt the company, at that point, especially if he didn't have any real money, right, then he would actually get into trouble. Then he would actually get into trouble. The thing is, like, as long as he doesn't violate his fiduciary responsibility, 
And he can just keep lying as long as the fucking lies end up benefiting shareholders, which it does. Which it literally does. Like, all the time. Literally did get in trouble when he said he was going private at 420. Yeah, I mean, that did happen. Oh, also, uh, we're, we'll talk about the Cybertruck in a second. I don't know if this is what the... Here I am, the richest man of the world, philosemite, climate crusader, and I still get shit from idiots. Megaphonics. There's so much better shit that you could post about Cybertruck and how it doesn't have fucking crumple zones and how it, it's just like, it looks like a, like a death trap. And instead, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Classic megaphonics. Had the fucking, had the post an unrelated ass, silly ass Elon meme, okay? Why'd you have to do that? for finally hitting us with the quote of the year. In his interview, George told the Post, I never claimed to be Jewish, I'm Catholic. Because I learned my maternal family had a Jewish background, I said I was Jew, ish But that's just not even true. The man literally called himself <laughs> Holishikly Jewish just a month before the election at a US Israel PAC meeting. Literally, nobody thought he meant Jewish. I mean, he clearly wanted people to think it, whatever. I feel foolish just trying to understand any of this. <laughs> Am I right? No, the Jew ish thing is like that is the closest, unironically, he's ever gotten to being actually Jewish. Okay? His entire fucking saga surrounding making up like holocaust grandparents from ukraine specifically to get ukraine clout and jewish clout is so larry david so fucking certified larry davidian that it it actually is the closest he has gotten to being unironically jewish it's, it's perfect. Yeah, am I right? And of course, this was also around the time he had some old Facebook comments resurface, along with this leaked audio of him. Wait, what? I didn't know this one. Around the time he had some old Facebook comments. He said, hi, what? What? What is this? Comments resurface, along with this leaked audio of him. You sit in a room with a lot of Jews, you're fucked. In new audio, George Santos imit imitates his district's Doing Jews. Doing what he considers to be an impression of a Jewish man, I guess. You sit in a room with a lot of Jews, you're f***. <laughs> it's, just, it, 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 it's funny when the isms start coming out, right? Oh, she, yeah, he's such a man, she's such a man, and then they go on to the next thing. And it's just like, it, it, oh, that's important. So then it's like, it's really bad. But anyway. Yeah, I have no idea how this is real. <laughs> what? Yo. Okay. I want to congratulate Jabri for, for bringing up new information that even I did not know about George Anthony Devalder Santos. Um, I'll just say that. That's shocking to me. Uh. I, I fancied myself to be the formative uh, George Santos historian. You know what I mean? Person. Broader media attention, though, meant deeper investigations into George's murky biography. Before long, even his own past relationships came up. Do you still stand him now? Yes. Are you kidding me? We just talked about how he, like, basically facilitated in the death of a motherfucking homeless disabled veterans cancer dog that is like that's it on the list of like comical crimes that you can conduct that literally is disney villain disney villain status okay and i stand him after that so this little tidbit about him trying to do like a like I don't know. I don't know what he was trying to do. Like some, some anti-Semitic joke that he was trying to make. Like, pff, nothing. Under scrutiny. First with the Daily Beast being unable to find any official marriage license for him and his husband in the state of New York. With some also pointing to his lack of wedding ring the day he first arrived in Washington. The first time most people even learned he was married at all was when he mentioned his husband in passing as a part of this tweet commemorating the late Senator Dianne Feinstein. Which I love because hard long- uh, excuse me. Yeah, hard launching. Watching your partner at the beginning of a memorial tribute. It's an act yeah. of insanity only George Santos could pull off. Yeah. Following up a few days. There's no better way. There's no, he did not, he did not do the classic soft launch of being like, of like showing another man in his Instagram stories or anything like that. He just went nutty with it. Diane Feinstein is dead. Also, me and my husband, who I'm married to, we love, we loved her. 
is later with this official confirmation that the two got married in 2021. But as some replies have pointed out, this isn't the first time George has been married. His first marriage lasted seven years and was with a woman from Brazil, to which there's also True. currently an investigation into whether or not he violated immigration law in marrying her. One of George's openly gay friends told the Daily Beast that he tried to get him to marry some Brazilian woman so he could get her citizenship, and that George told him there was money to be made from an arrangement like that. Truly not sure what the fuck that's about, but we know for sure George officially divorced his wife in 2019, a year before his congressional bid, and five years after he supposedly proposed to a man in 2014, sending out a Facebook invitation that read, Good evening, everyone. As you all may already know, Pedro and I have decided to join our toothbrushes. LOL, and a very few friends have been selected to share this special moment with us. I hope to see every one of you there and to be sharp and make it count. I know there was no time for a written invitation, but thanks to Facebook, everyone has a whole week's notice. LMAO, for all of you that know me, I can suck on timing. Thanks for sharing this very important day in our lives. See you there. This party never actually happened, as his ex-boyfriend Pedro Villarva unfortunately rejected George's proposal three times as he told the Daily Beast, reinforcing the idea that George would routinely engage in relationships with men years before he legally left his wife. In response to any speculation on his sexuality, George told the New York Post, I'm very much gay. I'm okay with my sexuality. People change. I'm one of those people who change. And while we're on the subject of change, it's also been reported that George was once a supporter of left-wing Brazilian President Lula, according to one no! past acquaintance. Which- No! What the fuck? Uh, what? would be in stark contradiction to the man we know George to be today. Instead of spearheading progressive bills to expand and protect the rights of the LGBTQ community, for example, George was a vocal- No, 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 this must be a lie. I don't want to think about that. I want to think about this as a lie. I'm, I'm booking this as a lie. This is a classic- George Santos lied. Supporter of Ron DeSantis's infamous Don't Say Gay bill, which has been widely condemned by activist groups as staunchly homophobic and unconstitutional. Even after George seemed to maybe change his mind on this later and denounced DeSantis's rhetoric as to diminish and remove rights from- I guess technically, I guess technically you could have, uh, if you can have like Bernie supporters who are Brazilian that love Bolsonaro, it goes in the other direction as well. You know what I mean? You have like Trump supporters who love Lula, I guess. I don't know how. Remember the fucking fighters that we looked at with Felix who were like major Bernie supporters who are also major Bolsonaro supporters? Probably only supported Lula when he thought Lula was corrupt. No, I mean, I don't know. From people like him, he made it clear he still supports the bill in nature. Not sure what part of it he supports, but he hasn't exactly garnered a reputation as an activist by palling around with some of the biggest homophobic monsters in politics, I can tell you that. Which is especially sad when you consider the drag queen allegations. Today, like well every day, we have new evidence of lies in the case of Republican Congressman George Santos. Now, Santos has vehemently denied reports as well as videos and photos that two sources told MEC News show him participating in drag shows. One of the top stories you may Slay. have heard if you're already familiar with George Santos is that he supposedly once performed in drag under the name Katara Ravache, at least according to Brazilian drag artist Eula Rochard. In January 2023, she made this post to Facebook caption. It's like, it, it, this part is actually such a funny part of the saga because like, Donald Trump and Rudy Giuliani did drag. Like, Donald Trump didn't personally do it, but he participated in the drag where he, like, motorboated Rudy Giuliani's drag titties, and that was far closer to Trump's election and re-election than, than this, right? Like, in the 90s, everybody was fucking doing drag in the early 2000s even. Like, it was a classic thing. It's just so fucking stupid. Like, it just only... It is a new phenomena, folks. Here, for those of you who haven't seen this shit, here you go. I'm gonna fucking pee real quick while I loop this. You know, you're really beautiful. And a woman that looks like that has to have her own special scent. Oh, thank you. Maybe, maybe you could tell me what you think of this scent. Hmm, I like that. This, this may be the best of all. Oh, 
Oh, you dirty boy, you. Oh, oh. Donald, I thought you were a gentleman. Hm. You can't say I didn't try. Mayor Giuliani, he's given away over $2 billion in corporate wealth. I'm glad you guys got to watch that twice because that shit deserves it. Is worthy. Anyway, um, but I digress. The point I was trying to make is that it was super commonplace. People fucking, it's a new phenomena. People are so stupid. They get so quickly primed into hating things by Republican media, especially as it corresponds to broader reactionary framing on an issue. It's like Americans, Americans are so comfortable at, at abiding by new reactionary standards without even considering whether they themselves have participated in it in the past, in the not so distant past, as a matter of fact. Like those, what was it? There was like a, like a bunch of cops that did the, uh, wait, I think it was literally, uh, what's his face? Oh, it was, uh, it was a, it was the Steven Seagal thing, remember? Steven Seagal in, in Louisiana, Jefferson Parish. They, the cops themselves literally went and fucking did a drag race to, to raise money. And that was like 2005 or something. Like It wasn't that long ago. My point is... That was 25 years. He's been doing drag for 25 years. Anyway, my point is... The point I'm trying to make is that... Uh, Americans are so easily duped into getting mad about shit, especially when it's reactionary framing. Um, another example of this would probably be how quickly we got back on the Islamophobia train. You know what I mean? 9-11 happens, Islamophobia goes crazy, goes nutty with it for like 20 fucking years. All right? And then we, like, there was a brief moment where it's like, maybe Islamophobia is not the hot thing anymore for like a couple of years. Boom. Right back at it like we never left it. It's so easy. Me with the American Republican congressman who wouldn't leave my house in Portuguese. Whoever said I was a liar, bite your tongue. Implying the person dripped out in red feathers and long earrings next to her to be none other than Representative Santos. The images originally appeared in a Brazilian newspaper in 2008 and were substantiated by an unearthed interview in which one journalist alleges he spoke to George's Katara nearly a decade prior. <laughs> Now, I don't know Portuguese, but those who do have commented down below that he's talking about all the various clubs he used to perform at in Rio, which to me reinforces that old Wikipedia user biography that referenced Anthony DeValder's successful stage life as a drag queen. Eula even told NBC that she knew George at a time when he was coming up in the drag world, and even acted as somewhat of a mentor towards him, along with citing his outgrown sense of grandeur and claiming he lied all the time. Initially, George responded to these claims with absolute and utter denial, writing the most recent obsession from the media claiming that I am a drag queen or performed as a drag queen is categorically false. The media continues to make outrageous claims about my life, though a few days later, as he was leaving LaGuardia Airport, George had changed his tune, telling reporters, I was young and had fun at the festival, sue me for having a life, which quite honestly is the most human thing I think think he's said so far. Had he just been honest about it from the start, I don't think this would have been the same story. What I don't understand is that George can be honest about this, but still repeatedly lie and change his story when it comes to other personal details about his family, for instance. Even as George made several amendments to his biography as more lies were exposed, there was one notable detail that remained a part of his website throughout it all, that his mother, Fatima DeValder, died died in 9-11, which by the way, was already a subject of debate because in classic George Santos fashion, he initially worded his mother's death in a way that made it seem she passed in her office when the World Trade Center was attacked, until later when he clarified actually she survived the initial attacks but passed away a few years later when she lost her battle to cancer. Only further reporting has indicated that Fatima DeValder wasn't even in the country in 2001. In a visa application she filed in 2003, Fatima states she had not been to America since she okay but 9-11 was a troublesome time for her in Brazil like I'm sorry yeah she fucking she stepped on a Lego that morning like it wasn't and then fell like could could it could that not be the case 
Are people not allowed to be traumatized anymore? Thank you. What if she was... What if... What if she just felt really sad about 9-11 and it traumatized her? She left it in 1999. And in another filing just three months before the attacks on the World Trade Center, Fatima explained she couldn't come to America because she had her green card stolen in Brazil. These are the words of George's own mother, whose son would later go on to lie about the nature of her death years after her passing in 2016. All for the aim of, I guess, appearing more human? Having such a personal connection to a tragedy that not only affected so many Americans, but specifically specifically New Yorkers, would undoubtedly lend him more credibility among voters in that region. But lying about such a thing also has the potential to irreparably ruin that image in the eyes of those same constituents. While the Washington office of George Santos is up and running, protesters gathered outside his vacant Douglaston district office, mounting calls to resign from voters who say they were duped by a candidate who fabricated virtually all of his qualifications. Great Neck voter Jody Cass Finkel has launched a bipartisan petition. We got a con man, we got a liar, we got a charlatan. Holding Pinocchio figures, voters say Santos is thumbing his nose at constituents by his silence. For some reason, I don't really know why, there's a lot of people that don't like George Santos and want him completely removed from politics altogether, as evident by Nassau County Republican leaders yeah. who- Yeah, homophobic, anti-Semitic, pushing Z-ass pro-Russia, uh, 9-11 lovers, okay? Yeah, exactly. Those are the people, haters. Us, on the other hand, at the Hassan Ivy broadcast, we, we know, we know George Santos would never watch the top of the hour ad break. He would not. He would actually, as a matter of fact, gift subscriptions to all in the Hassan Ivy community with his campaign contributions that he illegally got. So he could gift members in the community the opportunity to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour is a three-minute ad break coming now. If you have not received a gift to sell from George Anthony Devalder Santos, then all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or free. Here's a three-minute ad break now. <sighs> all called for George's immediate resignation the week following his inauguration, with several other New York representatives in the House urging the same. The reason the House Majority Leader at the time, Kevin McCarthy, opted not to take action, though, probably had to do with the fact that Republicans only hold a narrow majority at the moment and need pretty much all the seats they can get. George Santos previously subscribed for two months. Hasn't chatted. Anthony Devalder also is another uh, community member. He's got both of his identities, both of his accounts. And this is all despite one of George's fundraisers being indicted for impersonating a McCarthy aide on the phone to a big donor, but that's actually completely separate from George's own personal legal problems. Being issued one of two federal indictments in May of this year, with 13 Fox counts including Steve, wire thank you for the five fraud, money subs. laundering, theft of public funds, and lying to the House, his biggest mistake may have been using campaign money to pay for personal goods. And it's not even that he did it, it's that he did it the wrong way. Legal loopholes found within social welfare groups or leadership packs. This is the absolute best and funniest problem. The American legal structure allows him to do all of this and he just didn't do it correctly. Regularly. Dinesh D'Souza style? Yeah, more like Dinesh D'Lulu. Fucking got him. Help politicians get away with the exact type of thing George was doing. It's just that instead of using a real social welfare group or a 501c4, he set up a regular business and falsely told donors it was a 501c4. That business, Redstone Strategies, which wasn't even registered with the IRS, had nothing to do with his campaign and everything to do with his bank account, as stated by New York Times contributor David Firestone, who notes that this business which is incredibly illegal, dude. This was wiring funds directly into George's personal bank account, which is like insanely illegal, man. You could have gotten away with it too if you just were a Pre-watched. Bit smarter about it, but I digress. At this point, even his own campaign treasurer, Nancy Mo 
To be fair, Jobber is a Hasanabi head, so. Args has flipped on him. As I referenced earlier, Nancy pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to defraud the US by committing one or more federal offense, according to CNN. Overseeing the Santos campaign finances, Nancy told prosecutors in October that, quote, I filed a first quarter 2022 report stating that $500,000 was loaned to the campaign by co-conspirator one and the money was not received at the time. Co-conspirator one, of course, being George. Implicating him even further, and Nancy confirmed, I did these things in agreement with co-conspirator number one for his benefit and to obtain money for his campaign by artificially inflating his funds to meet thresholds set by a national political committee. Her testimony came just days before George was then indicted a second time, with U.S. Attorney Breon Pierce stating, Santos is charged with stealing people's identities and making charges on his own donor's credit cards without their authorization, lying to the FEC and- Which- apparently quite literally included Republican congresspersons and their mothers, okay? And their moms. Please understand something. That's, that's cool. You gotta hand it to him. You have to give it to him. You have to let him have that. He's chasing the fucking bag. He's getting his money up and not his fucking funny up. I respect that by extension, the public, about the financial state of his campaign. Santos falsely inflated the campaign's reported receipts with non-existent loans and contributions that were either fabricated or stolen. So, among other things, George is now being accused of stealing the personal identities of donors to make over $44,000. By the way, it's pretty fucking awesome that he has all of this shit dead to rights, and he's still... He's still just, like, chirping on Fox News in the interview that we just watched against Brian Kill Me. Like, no, Brian, I will not kill you, you know? I, I actually did nothing wrong, and everything I did was awesome and correct. ...dollars in charges over the course of eight months without their knowledge. Because these donations often exceeded federal campaign contribution limits, George would just say the money came from his own finances, which wasn't true. At one point, allegedly charging one donor's credit card $12,000 and just sliding the majority of it into his own bank account. I mean... Like... That... Okay. Well, let's talk about that for a second. So... One. When you're doing crimes... What you're probably not supposed to do is, is trigger agencies, okay? You're not supposed to trigger, like, even one agency. You have the FBI. You have the, the uh, I guess you would, in this circumstance, it would be the, the FEC, right? The problem is he did something that would bring in multiple the sec as well the irs he brought in every single agency possible to the fucking table like he like twelve thousand immediately twelve thousand immediately triggers alarm bells okay now you got the fbi looking into it the fact that he did not stay under the legal limit for what kind of campaign contribution someone can make to a campaign. Also, ridiculous. Like, not only did he go over the legal limit of campaign contributions from multiple people, including a Republican congressperson and his mother, he also fucking hit above 10K. And when you go above 10K, automatically it triggers something in the bank that will, I mean, it triggers something within the FBI that are going to look into your bank account now. It's so sloppy, it's ridiculous. And throughout it all, he still says he's not taking a plea deal, maintaining it wasn't him and that he can still prove his innocence. Well, it's almost a month and a half later and we're all still waiting on him to do that. Despite all of this, and even after stepping down from his committee assignments in January, George has continued voting on bills regularly, looming in the background of hearings, usually keeping to himself, in between getting chewed out by Massachusetts it's Dilf, I mean Senator Mitt Romney. Romney telling Santos in that chamber, 
you don't belong here. He's a sick puppy. Uh, he, he shouldn't be. He shouldn't be there. It wasn't very Mormon. Of him. He's That's a dope. I can tell you. That's not to say George can't hold his own in the good Twitter spat. You trust me when I say he's good at popping. Damn! What the fuck? What the real? Life? That's not to say George can't hold. Hey, Mitt Romney. Just a reminder: you will never be president. Hold his own in the good Twitter spat. You trust me when. Unlike Santos, Congress, I didn't have to lie to get elected. My credentials are clean. I'm actually Jewish, and unlike yours, my diploma from Harvard is real. Real? Like your chin? Wait, didn't this guy literally have, like, a disability, by the way? If I recall, I think he's just, like... It's pretty awesome. I mean, let him fight. Like, it's awesome. When I say he's good at popping off at random people, beefing with this random guy on numerous occasions just for the sake of it, everyone's coming after him. I mean, that's why he must see himself as our generation's Rosa Parks. Mitt Romney, the man goes to the State of the Union of the United States wearing a Ukraine lapel pin, tells me, a Latino gay man, that I shouldn't sit in the front, that I should be in the back. Well, guess what? Rosa Parks didn't sit in the back, and neither am I going to sit in the back. His allies in the that's house awesome. seem few and far between at the moment. Sure, he's got Marjorie Jewish space lasers tailored green on his side but he's also lied about his interactions with other members like Kristen. Sin you gotta that's a classic you gotta have a like a like a black iconic human rights leader that you in the silliest way possible compare yourself to that literally is at the foundation of like white supremacist reactionary politics in america Amy Schumer did it, like, last week. <coughs> Don't you remember? Amy Schumer was like, MLK would love the genocide and ethnic cleansing of Palestinians, and you guys are basically shitting on me. When you're shitting on me, you're shitting on Martin Luther King. <laughs> Cinema, who he claimed was very encouraging and welcoming to him. Well, she insists that to have never spoken, which has got to make you feel a little bad for the guy. Ooh, that's crazy. Even when you lost the Kirsten Cinema, well, I guess Kirsten Cinema was like, you know, allegedly may or may not have been uh, blowing Mitt Romney's mind. So she's more on the Romney train than she is on the motherfucking. Uh, George Santos train, that's for sure. Hey, George isn't a saint by any means, but has he really committed any crimes? Yes, are you fucking kidding me? Yes, yeah, he's being indicted on 23 charges and has a trial date set for September 2024, two months ahead of when his re-election would have been had he not suspended his campaign following the most recent developments from the House Ethics Committee. In other words, it's never been more Jover. If this building, if this city put the effort to fixing our country the same way that they put on expelling me, we'd be in a better place. But this place is... Why is he putting that shit on, dude? He's like, his face has gotten more powdery. He kind of looks like, um, what was the, what was the fucking Australian comedy that what we do in the shadows? Like he looks like a vampire from that fucking show at this point. I don't know what, what's happening there. I don't know what it is. Not Australian. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, it's fucking Kiwi, mate. The same way that they put on expelling me, we'd be in a better place. But this place is littered in political theater, and the American people are the ones paying the price. In the time it took me to make... He also could be uh, uh, pulling a Sammy Sosa, but I don't think so. Make this video. Thomas Swazi, the Democrat whose seat George took over, has since launched his own campaign with the intention of winning back his original seat. But to be fair, it never felt like George enjoyed the job anyway. The most excited I've ever seen him get is when he was asked a question about the latest season of RuPaul's Drag Race. I mean, he just never seemed super jazzed about being in the house beyond the money he temporarily earned from his campaigns. Congressman Santos, who do you think is gonna win Drag Race this season? This season. 
I have not watched. You gotta, you gotta read up. I don't know if he even wanted to win. I mean, just think about it. Having to constantly deal with reporters hounding you with questions every time you step outside your office must be annoying. Getting little to no respect from anyone at your job must be rough. And to know there is only 7% of the country huh. who wants you in government has got to be brutal. For reference, there are more people in America who think the earth is flat than want George Santos in office. He was never gonna stick around long, I'm sorry to say. But that doesn't mean I didn't enjoy the ride. Yeah, because one is true and the other one is false. You know what I mean? Yeah, the earth is flat. So, of course, there's more Americans that believe. What? I'm, I'm confused. Usually our politicians are only corrupt in boring ways. George, however, at least kept us all on the edge of our seats, waiting to see what new wacky development would come next. He funded a trip to Atlantic City with campaign dollars? Nice. He misused funds to buy OnlyFans and lip filler? A man of the people. He might be going to federal prison for falsifying finance reports? Classic George. That's not to say he isn't a horrible person. He is. But if we're gonna have horrible people in our government, they might as well be horrible and ways that are occasionally entertaining. He may not be in the house for much longer, but he will be a representative of the be gay do crimes community forever. I got my ticket for the long way around. It's a, lots of energy, guys. Oh God, he put the karaoke performance in there too. Let's go. Let's have fun, 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 fun. Yeah, go. The one with prettiest of views. And I sure would like some sweet company And I'm leaving tomorrow, what do you say? When I'm gone, when I'm gone You're gonna miss me when I'm gone You're gonna miss me by my hair You're gonna miss oh me Oh my everywhere. god, this is where y'all stole that meme miss from? Me when I'm gone when I'm gone, when I'm gone, you're gonna miss me when I'm gone. You're gonna miss me by my walk. You're gonna He's not bad. Shut up. <laughs> You're fucking ridiculous, okay?